What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode of Tea and Tesla. Pouring up a jasmine tea right now. Actually, my second steep on these leaves. And we've got some Tesla news to discuss. This is hot off the press. This has been causing a bit of a stir in the Tesla community for a while now because we've had Sawyer, you know, one of the top Tesla influencers and news people out there was flown out to Austin with a handful of other key Tesla influencers. They didn't say anything. We had, they apparently got a tour of Giga Texas. No one knew what it was. Tesla drops this weird fan video, like literally of like a, well, it looked like a fan, but now we know it's a wheel. Anyway, the Tesla world has been curious about what's going to come out. Is it the new Roadster? Is the Tesla working on a drone? Or is it <laughs> what we all know now, a more affordable version of the Model 3 and Y? Tesla's been promising, uh, more affordable models in their shareholder letters for qu quarter after quarter now. It was supposed to be in the first half of this year, but then with the tax credit expiring, I think it sort of fell into Tesla's lap to say, let's have a record quarter. Then after the tax credit expires, we need a, ne need a new demand driver. Then let's introduce the cheaper Tesla. So let's walk through what they've actually announced today. And the stock is down a little bit. People are saying they're a little bit disappointed in this news. I mean, yeah, it's not a flying car. It's not something crazy. It's kind of what we all expected. It looks boring. It looks like it's just a Model Y. It looks like it's just a Model 3. But the truth is, this is potentially the biggest product in that's going to matter for Tesla investors. This is going to move the needle. I was looking at this, um, you know, just this quarter. We saw Tesla hit record sales, bouncing back after the Tesla brand was dead. Everyone hates Elon. Well, what happens next? The brand has record sales because of a $7,500 tax credit. So... And that was expiring. So I think that, to me, what it showed is that what Elon has been saying all, all this whole time, that price is the biggest reason people don't have a Tesla. It's all about price. It's not because they don't like a Tesla. It's the best car. It's just that people can't afford it. And so that's why affordability is so key. And so that's why, to me, it may not, to many people, it may not look like a big deal that Tesla has announced these new Model 3 and Ys because they look so similar and we all knew it was coming, but this is a game changer. Making the world's best selling car, the Model Y, 10% more affordable overnight. Like imagine if the Camry was just instantly 10% off everywhere. Like it's gonna be huge. The incremental demand of each percent of dropping the price. I was just looking at this new stat on X that popped up that was saying the average price of a new car is like $49,000 in the US. The Tesla, no tax credit, is at 40 Gs. 20% below the average purchase price of a new vehicle in the United States of America. So Tesla has not only reached parity with the average vehicle price, but is below it with their electric vehicle. And what is even more incredible about that is that they're making money on that car. If any other car company sold an electric car for 30 or 40 grand, they'd be losing money hand over fist on it. That's why Tesla's the only one doing it. So this is a, I think if you're a Tesla investor and sort of someone like me who got started in the story with the electrification, selling electric vehicles, transitioning the world to sustainable energy, this is a huge deal um, for Tesla to make their cars more affordable because it means it could, this could double sales of, or double potential demand just by dropping the price this much. So I think this is a, a huge needle mover for Tesla. Um, there's been rumors going back and forth. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Well, now we know it's happening. Um, and they're out. So I'm gonna take another sip of tea, then let's dive into the stats of these new vehicles. Cause it's not just one, it's cheaper model Y and three that looks like they've rolled out here. Wait, I'm gonna give a shout out to the tea I'm drinking right now. This is one of my favorite tea brands uh, or tea shops, Song Tea in San Francisco. And this is their Snow Jasmine, um, which is a the tip, sort of like a green tea. Um, that's like the tip of the leaf bud, like very, like super artisanal, you can see here the, the leaves, just the tip of the bud, fragrance with jasmine flowers. Ooh, light, but it has body, very floral. I'm loving this tea. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, whoops. Model Y, so they come out the standard Model Y, $39,990 with no tax credit, under 40 grand. It looks like that's gonna have 321 miles of range, which is actually better than a lot of people are expecting. Uh, my friend Jay Phil, she was thinking it was going to be like a 60 kilowatt battery with like 280. Looks like they did about, I think it's a 69 kilowatt battery with 320 miles of range. So that's super good, better than expected. I think that's, that's actually really impressive. Top speed, 125 miles an hour. You're never going to go that fast. That's fire. The zero to 60 times, 6.8 seconds. That's still pretty fast. 
Tesla doesn't sell slow cars, but that is notably slower than the other versions. So if we go to the premium, which is 44,990, 5,000 more, you're gonna get 357 miles of range, still 125 top speed, 5.4 seconds zero to 60. Now you're also getting screens in the back, the glass sunroof, a ton more premium features, I think even the wind uh, the side mirrors are manual fold in now. So what Tesla's done with this standard model here is they basically taken out all the fancy features. It's less of a luxury car, kept the core Tesla battery technology, made it a little slower, um, but it's pretty, I gotta say, I mean, this is an amazing product. Like, I'm trying to think, I kind of like it that Tesla has a cheaper car and then a little bit more bougie premium. I think it's just gonna bring a lot more people into the brand, but I still think I would, get, I, at first I was gonna be like, oh, why would I ever buy a more expensive model while I'll just go for standard? Premium, and I think you're getting more stuff. You're getting the rear screen, um, the sunroof, it's a little fancier um, in the interior. So uh, I think it's, it, it's a, this is filling a perfect hole in Tesla's product lineup. Like people have been begging there's so many people out there who don't care about these little features like the sunroof and the power this that just want a cheaper car. And that's what Tesla's delivered. And I think it's gonna be a needle mover in a big way. Okay, now let's compare just briefly to the premium all wheel drive, which is now 48,990, so 9,000 more expensive. That's a 4.6 zero to 60, but 327 range. So the premium all wheel drive is 327 range, but the standard has 321. So it's like, it's not even that much less range. So I think, I'm, and, and now let's go to the Model 3, see um, what the Model 3 differences are. Model 3 standard 36,990, wow, 37 Gs, 321 miles of range, 125 mile hour top speed, 5.80 to 60. The premium, which is, uh, looks like about four and a half thousand more than that, 363 miles of range, 4.9. So basically you're losing half a second, a second off your zero to 60, but you're saving five grand. You're losing maybe 10%, 30 miles of range. But I think if you have over 300 miles of range, 320, that's, that's very impressive. That's the one metric where Tesla, I think, crushed it on this unveil um, is the range. You know, what, do, what does this mean for the company and the stock? I think Tesla is, is they just reported a blockbuster quarter, 497,000 deliveries. That's literally a record of all time for the company. So um, a bunch of demand got pulled forward because of that tax credit. So now all eyes are on Q4. We've, they've released these lower models to sort of offset that decrease from the tax credit pull through. How, much, how long does it take for Tesla's sales to get back to 500,000 and set a new record? I actually think it's gonna be way faster than people think. That's why people on Twitter and, and X or whatever are a little bit bummed about this news. It's like, oh, it's not a roadster, you know, it's not that crazy, but this is a needle mover for Tesla. Like if we're talking about people subscribing to FSD, more data for the system, more Teslas on the road, more supercharging revenue, just more vehicle sales, which have kind of been flatlining until this recent quarter around four to 500, 450, 500,000 a quarter. We've been there for three years and that's, we haven't had a new vehicle in our lineup really besides the Cybertruck, which is pretty niche. So I think this is what seems like a boring announcement is huge for Tesla's mission of creating more electric vehicles and getting more people driving electric. And it's a huge, gonna be a huge profit driver for the company. I mean, now they are really competing head on with the Toyota Camry in front of car. And so, I mean, so, so what's crazy about this is 36, 37, 40 grand sounds like pretty cheap, you know, for a pretty basic new car. It's like, that's about as cheap as you're gonna get unless you get something pretty crappy, right? But what's crazy to me about that is this isn't including the savings that you get. Like when I charge at my superchargers around here, I'm paying 10, 15 bucks. You fill up an equivalent car at the tank, you're, you know, it's 40 bucks, 50 bucks, because if you assume it's not a full tank. So you're saving so much money per month on gas. You're saving so much money per month on maintenance um, that once you factor that into the all-in monthly cost of this vehicle, it's an even better deal than it seems. And so I don't know if the market will be quick to realize that or not, how kind of smart, I think people are smarter than, you, than we think though. Like, consumers research a car. It's their most, it's like their biggest investment other than their house. And so I think people are gonna realize how much savings come from driving an electric car that needs less maintenance and doesn't need gas. And so when you layer in the savings, I mean, especially, uh, let's see how much FSD is. So um, eight Gs for full self-driving. So right now for 44,990, 
I can get a Model 3 with 300 miles of range and full self-driving. What? This is deal is, the value of that is insane. Under 50 grand to get a car with FSD, under 45 grand. I mean, this, so, so I was just talking to a founder uh, friend, catching up with him, and he was, he was uh, cracking me up because he starts the call going on and on about his new Model Y and how amazing it is and how he's never owned a car, but he bought his first car. It's like the best product ever. He was gushing about it. It, it was funny. And it, we were just laughing about how much value there is for buying it. Like, like the, the, what you get for your money is, I tell people, I wouldn't even buy a Ferrari. I wouldn't even take my, and this is gonna seem ridiculous because we're on T and Tesla though. So I'm hyping up Tesla, obviously. I should buy a shareholder and customer and a fan of making things more sustainable. But why would I want a Ferrari? I would take my Model Y over a Ferrari every day because I get driven, I get chauffeured. I have a private show. I don't drive, I get chauffeured. I have a private chauffeur everywhere I go. I mean, I rent Teslas on Turo. Every time I rent a car, it has to be a Tesla now. I'm addicted to FSD. Like I'm literally, I cannot drive without it. I'm getting worse at driving. Like I'm, it, FSD is safer than me. It just, it's night and day. And if you use full self, Tesla's full self driving, you know the power of this feature. So for me to say, you can get a car with 300 miles of range and FSD for under $45,000. You, doesn't matter if you pay Ferrari $5 million, that car will never drive itself. So to me, it's funny when these leapfrogs in technology happen, what that does to the perception of luxury. I look at people driving around these fancy smancy Rolls Royces and ca cars. I mean, there's not that many cars cooler than a Tesla, but even if I do see one, I'm like laughing at them because I'm like, you paid so much more money than me for your car and you're driving. Like that's going to hit people in the head when they realize how, how, anyway, I don't know. I'm rambling on and on here, but this is, the, the fact that full self-driving is only eight, thousand dollars and it's 45 there's no way this is going to last there's no way that as once full self-driving gets approved and you can watch netflix in the car this isn't going to be eight thousand this is going to be like eighty thousand like why would tesla sell you a car for 50 grand when they can make three hundred thousand on it by putting it on the network so I just had a crazy thought that's like, will people even be allowed to buy Teslas or Tesla will just put everything on the robo taxi network, which isn't gonna happen, but that's when you think through the economics of it, that's how much is on the table from this fully autonomous vehicle. So I think uh, kind of, it's funny because it kind of is my nerdy, the nerdy Tesla fan in me almost got bummed out when I was like walking around on X today. I'm like, oh, like it's just a cheaper Model 3, you know, Model Y, you know, whole Mars, like Model Y poor launch, blah, blah, blah. Like <laughs> everyone's having fun with it. Um, but I'm like, the more and more I, I sit back and think about it, I'm like, dude, as an investor, as someone who's hyped about, like, and just as a fan of Tesla, it's like, this is big. Like I want people, more, more people to experience the amazingness of FSD. Um, it's gonna make the roads safer. It's gonna reduce our emissions. Um, it's gonna be great for Tesla's earnings and share price and revenue. Um, I think this is, to me, making me more and more bullish of maybe Q4 is a little dip from the Q3 sales, but as these cheaper cars ramp and people realize how good FSD is, um, you know, let, let, let's take this thought exercise. Like, I would say, you know, so many people when they buy a car brand, switch brands right? They'll be like, oh, uh, I can switch brands because it's not that big of a deal. I'll get this, this new car. Once you get a Tesla, and people are loyal to brands. People like Subaru get Subaru. People like Jeep get Jeep. But to me, the loyalty with Tesla is far greater because they, I have FSD. I can't switch. Once you get hooked on FSD, you're never going to switch from Tesla. So, so many of these Tesla sales are recurring that once you get locked into this Tesla ecosystem, you're only buying Teslas, at least for now. So I think that's an underrated effect that will help Tesla demand of beyond politics, beyond you know a gazillion news articles saying how horrible Elon is and how bad Tesla is, blah, blah, blah. It's like the truth gets out. There's no such thing as bad press. People are realizing you can get a fully self-driving car for under 45,000 right now. I mean, I do not think this will last. I think it's too good of a deal to last. The value's insane. So, um, I'm very hyped. It's gotta be a good day to be a Tesla salesperson. Think about that. Now they get to tell everybody the price. I mean, yeah. Shout out to my, my boy, Raph, at the U Village uh, store. Um, but anyway, uh, this is T and Tesla. 
Tesla's launched new ch uh, cheaper models, $37,000 Model 3 with 300 miles of range, $40,000 Model Y with also $300, only eight Gs to add FSD on top. If you don't got a Tesla already, what are you waiting for? This is your chance to buy one. Um, I truly think that once full self-driving uh, gets updated to where you don't have to monitor it, they're gonna raise the price in a huge way. So, um, I don't know, that's my theory. But what do you guys think? Were you hyped on it? What do you think of the features? Um, or is this gonna cause you to get your first Tesla if you don't have one already? I mean, it would be cool to know. Um, this is HyperChange, T and Tesla. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm gonna have um, a special guest I'm cooking up um, for V after we test out V14 FSD for T and Tesla, so that's coming up soon. Um, hope you all have an amazing day. Go Tesla. Peace.